Okay, here's an interesting test. Shoot on the Blackmagic production camera 4K and on the second camera, it's a PMW F3. Now about two years ago when I bought my first F3, that cost me 12 and a half thousand pounds with the S-Log upgrade. And that was without the VAT in the UK. Now the Blackmagic production camera 4K, you can buy that for less than 2,000 pounds. I think it's about 1925 XFAT in the UK. So it says a couple of things. I mean, I'll know more when I've actually sat down and compared the pictures but it says one what black magic is doing in terms of absolutely tearing apart the price structure of what high quality cameras will cost and it also says how quickly technology changes We've seen some staggering shifts in technology over the years. I thought it actually got really good when it got to digital video in very late 1995. That's why I bought my first DV camera. Never in a million years would I have dreamed it would go through standard definition to widescreen to HD to 2K and 4K. And now I have got in my hands here the Blackmagic production camera, the 4K model, and I've been shooting with it all week back here in Perth, Australia. Now, I just love to film wildlife and Perth is great for that because you've got the Swan River. It's a wonderful scene just to go out and film. Lots of birds, lots of wildlife. For me, animals in nature is the most beautiful thing of all. And of course, filming around the river can be wonderful. You get all sorts of creatures, all sorts of bird life. Sometimes you get the pelicans, which I've filmed in the past. You get birds drying their wings. And I just love it because to me, it's real nature at work. So you get out into the bush and Australia's got so much to offer. Offer. Obviously everyone knows the cliches, which is you've got kangaroos, and you've got koalas, and you've got to look for them, but you can get them. You get out the right light, the right time of day, you can shoot magic. And other times, I mean, even though Australia's got beautiful things to offer, you want to take it a little bit further. And it's not just Australiana that I like, it's anything. Living creatures to me are the most beautiful things. And for testing 4K, well, I just got to get out there and really see what I can get. Now, let me just talk about 4K for a few minutes. 4K to me is just a number. I mean, there's so many people excited about the whole 4K thing. And this is what it says, Blackmagic 4K on the camera. I'm not actually that worried about 4K for myself. 4K, like I said, it's just a number. And it means we've got more pixels. We've got 3840 by 2160. That's the frame size of what you get in this camera. And to me, it's not just about the resolution. I mean, okay, 4K. 3840 by 2160, that's the size of the sensor. But what is a massive deal to me is the sensor size rather than the resolution of what's going on. Now, we've got different sensors that we can use to our advantage in combination with the different lenses. So if you're shooting on a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, you've got a smaller sensor which gives you the 2.8 crop factor, which means if you put your 400 mil lens on that, if you said three times 400 mil would take you to 1200 mil, it's not quite three times, 2.88 to be precise. So that would give you probably around 1100 mil, maybe between 1100, 1150 mil in 35 mil photography terms, which is a staggering length of a lens to be shooting with. I mean, imagine how much money you'd be paying for a lens that's between 1100 and 1150 mil. I mean, I don't even know if they actually make lenses of that focal length. So we're dealing with things that didn't exist before. Then you get the Blackmagic Cinema camera with the 2.3 times crop factor. You put that same 400 mil lens on 2.3 times 400 you're shooting about 940 mil that's pretty staggering so you stick that 400 mil onto this with an s35 sensor you're shooting 600 mil so my point is bloody hell <laughs> hi there <laughs> you're right <laughs> cool <laughs> you see the strangest things <laughs> so my point is between the different sensor size, the different lenses, and what we can do in combination, particularly if you understand what they do, you can do stuff that was never available to us in the past. And to me, that's immensely exciting. Now the low light capability on this is a lot less. 
in terms of what you'll be able to shoot in low light than what you can shoot on the 2.5K camera, for example. So this camera will shoot at 200 ASA, 400 ASA, or 800 ASA. So for most of this week, I've been shooting on 200 and 400 ASA. When I get out at night, I can see the limitations in terms of what you can actually do. And I'll tell you something else that excites me tremendously. I might be the only person in the world that's excited about this. The camera will shoot 4K, but it will also shoot HD. And the reason I care about that is because HD is my format. I'll happily shoot 4K and oversample the image at source because that gives us a huge advantage. When you take that 4K, you stick that into a 1920, 1080 timeline, you can punch in on an image and crop take a crop out of the image and to me that's the big advantage not because it's 4k 4k sake because you've got more resolution to work with and the fact is I already do it on HD as far as I'm concerned arguably you can go 20 to 40 percent crop in on an HD image before you start really losing the resolution and the image starts falling apart so when you've got 4k I'm pulling figures out of the air, maybe you can go 60 to 80%, or maybe you can go 60 to 100% crop in and actually make use of that increased resolution. So I repeat myself, 4K for 4K's sake, no big deal to me. I'm not distributing 4K. I don't know anyone that is, but 4K for the sake of oversampling its source and be able to make use of the extra resolution matters to me. In combination with the fact that we've got an S35 sensor, in combination with the fact that the big, big deal is we can now go wide, super wide if we want. Okay, that matters. What I've actually got on here is a 14 mil lens. So that gives me about 21 mil, which to me is fantastic. So I care about the 4K camera because of the crop size of the sensor, the actual S35 and the fact that I can do wide when I want wide as we're shooting now. And the fact that I've got the over sampling at source to be able to punch in on that image. Okay, now I'm going to do a bit of an experiment now. What I'm going to do, we're shooting on a PMW F3 now with a 17 to 35, which is basically giving us about 25 mil in 35 mil terms. What I'm going to do is I'm going to swap out the cameras and I'm going to shoot on the 4K camera, which is going to give us the exact same angle of view because it's an S35 sensor on the PMW F3. It's an S35 sensor on the Blackmagic production camera 4K. But I want to just put it there so you can see how nice and wide we can go. And you can't go that wide when you're shooting on the 2.3 or the 2.8 crop factors with the Blackmagic cinema camera, the original one, or the Blackmagic pocket camera. I hope I'm not losing you in the numbers. But the big deal is between those three cameras, you can do so much. But I can't help but do the test because like I said, 12 and a half thousand pounds for that camera when I bought it two years ago, less than 2,000 pounds for the one you're looking at right now.